Good afternoon and welcome. We're coming to you from day two of the Fiji Symposium in Bangalore, the platform for all dialogue on financial inclusion. And with me today is the Executive Director, Financial Inclusion and Customer Protection and Communication from Reserve Bank of India, Ms. Surekha Marandi. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much for being part of this. Uh, this is the first Fiji Symposium and it's happening in our country, India. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think it is a recognition of the decade-long efforts at financial inclusion. And uh, in fact, uh, we are gathering stream and we have still a long way to go, but uh, we are in a good spot at the moment. So That's it's good that we are having the Fiji conference here so that we might also learn from others' experiences. Correct. That's great. Thank you. Uh, what according to you is the potential of digital financial services to actually increase financial inclusion? Uh, actually, financial inclusion started with digital financial inclusion when your ICT solutions became available in the year 2007-8. Okay. At that point of time, we were concentrating on bank-led financial inclusion with business correspondent models and a basic banking account. So the regulatory uh, effort was at enabling this, the BC model and the basic uh, banking accounts. For the purpose of uh, basic banking accounts, the, uh, we felt that uh, in the beginning, for example, uh, the, if you have to do financial inclusion in the hinterland, the accounts may not be used. So regulations were put in place to ensure that there were no charges if there was zero balance and the, re the accounts will not become dormant if the accounts are not used. Okay. So these two regulatory guidelines were in issue to ensure that these uh, accounts are you know usable indefinitely okay. and for an unlimited <laughs> period you know without okay. they being closed yeah. on account of dormancy or uh, inactivity, uh, inactivity. Okay. so uh, once the bc model uh, was put in place uh, the main uh, hitch came in identity because of these aml and kyc guidelines and the people, for example, 55% of the population is in the, are farmers, Correct. they are agriculturists, and around 30% are migrants in the cities. Mm -hmm. None of them had documents for their identity, nor did they have any address proof. Yeah. You know, you don't have address proof in a village, you don't have identity mm -hmm. in a village yeah. or for migrants. Yeah. So that is why Aadhaar was you know, pushed. It was implemented, it was pushed under Dr. Y.V. Reddy. Mm -hmm. He had taken special, you know, initiative to push the Aadhaar initiative. Okay. So once the Aadhaar uh, came into being, came into place, the basic bank accounts got linked to Aadhaar mm -hmm. and that is how it was easy to open, you know, uh, a bank accounts Correct. because of this uh, Aadhaar linkage. And in fact, the government also came under Dr. Prime Minister Modi, they also became very active mm -hmm. and that pushed it further and that jam and along with that the mobile became very you know cheap, we had cheap handsets, we had the data also became cheap, Inter I mean the data uh, charges became cheap, so this jam trinity uh, has resulted in this financial inclusion being you know brought out, brought out uh, in a greater scale and a greater right. you know order. and apart from this i think uh, the last mile connectivity was a very big issue and the last mile connectivity had to be uh, you know sustainable it had to be cost effective not only for the you know per, i mean customer but also the person who was providing the last, last mile connectivity so brick and mortar branches were totally you know uh, they were a no-go as far yeah. as sustainability of last mile connectivity was concerned. That is why we brought in other players like your small finance banks who had more uh, inroads into the hinterland as well as your mobile, uh, the payment banks yeah. who are now not NBFC, which are non-banks. So non-banks have also now brought into the platform so that the financial inclusion gets gets greater velocity. Correct. That's great. Uh, but like you said, there are uh, people who are below the poverty line in India and across the world. What do you think are the main factors for them to actually prefer digital financial services over traditional methods of cash and banking? Uh, 
you know, we have a demographic uh, advantage over the rest of the world. 68% of our population is below 35. Okay. So as far as digital and uh, digital financial inclusion is concerned, mm -hmm. I think they will lead the... <laughs> They'll be the front runners. <laughs> They'll be the front runners. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of them have mobiles. All of them are into smartphones or, you know, feature yeah, phones. Yeah. So our yeah, 68, the 68 percent population will do the financial inclusion, even though they are poor. Correct. They will link up with. Uh, I mean, an ecosystem has to be evolved to include everything into the digital space, including, say, for a farmer, the input supply should be available yes. digitally. He can. Uh, he should be able to sell it in an e mandi yeah, you know. Yeah. So the whole ecosystem has to Shift also, to you know, develop so that the digital financial inclusion can happen for the poorest or the poor. That's great. Yeah. Uh, when it comes specifically to the role of the RBI, what is their uh, role and their next steps in digital financial services in India? Uh, as you know, that uh, we have always insisted on interoperability. Okay. It started our RTGS NEFT was interoperable, our ATMs became interoperable. Yes. So, and also our uh, mobile phones became interoperable, IMPS is interoperable. So, everything is, you know, that is the key to the, you know, the way forward. to the way forward. And RBI has always uh, seen that. And, and in fact, now mobile wallets also, they yeah. want to make it interoperable. Yeah. So, that is why you leverage into the infrastructure. Like if you, have silos, you can't leverage into the infrastructure that uh, is there. So, with the uh, interoperability of all payment and all payment instruments across the spectrum, as well as uh, providing CKYC, the centralized KYC, though, so that people don't have to give their Aadhaar documents to each and every, you know, places. Mm -hmm. You just have a kin, KIN, uh, to uh, to give your consent to any financial service. Just you know, that time. is the one, just one. And you just have to give your kin. If you want that service, you just give that kin, K yeah. K-I-N, for, you know, whatever, uh, service, whatever you service you require. So that is the, you know, our wish list for the future. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that wish list does come true. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah.